and welcome to Girls Do Sport, the bite-sized guide to women's sport here in Scotland. In each programme we focus on a different sport, showcasing what it's about, its key people and what the future holds for it here in Scotland. Today's show is all about squash. Later on we'll be speaking to our wonderful studio guests, the current world number one Lisa Aitken and Scottish squash CEO Maggie Still. You can get involved in the conversation using the hashtag Girls Do Sport on Twitter. Today's show looks at the world of women's squash in Scotland. Squash dates back to 1850 at Harrow Scale just outside of London and the sport's popularity has soared ever since. The first women's world team championships were held in Birmingham in 1979 with the Great Britain team winning the home event. In 1981, Scotland went to loan and competed in the Toronto Games, finishing a credible fourth, the nation's greatest position at the championships. Scotland last competed in 2012 with studio guest Lisa Aitken part of the squad. It made its Commonwealth Games debut in Kuala Lumpur in 1988, but it is yet to feature in the Olympics. But there is a sense that a successful bid is just around the corner. The equality debate continues in sport, but earlier this year, squash became one of the few to boast equal prize money for men and women across almost all its events. And Scottish squash continues to thrive. Scottsdale Leisure Centre in Glasgow plays host to some of the best players in the country. Our reporter Stuart Reid went along to the first Scottish Open to catch some of the action and talk to some of its leaders and rising stars. Today we're launching the um, Scottish Women in Sport Girls Do Squash campaign. Well, this is a wonderful opportunity to show that girls do play squash and that they do it and have fun. It's for every girl. It's for young uh, old, it's a great way to keep fit, so this is just a wonderful fun. It's not intense, it's just having fun and enjoying squash. There are events virtually every weekend and clubs run events all of the time and we've got um, a Scottish Junior Open that we run every year. But I think what's great about today is we've got some fantastic female coaches out there um, who all enjoy squash and have made a life of, it, of enjoying squash and they're coming and showing the girls a little bit more. They're tremendous role models. The two coaches who are here today uh, are actually European medalists, but they're also great coaches. It's a really good event we've got going on today that's um, for Scottish women in sport, basically. and. It's nice to see a, a big turnout at, at an event like this. It's amazing to see like 16, 17 girls um, playing. I think, you know, five, ten years ago when me and Els were kind of this age, it was never like that. And it's just so great to see the numbers continually rising and it's exciting. <laughs> I came from, I was a swimmer, um, and then uh, there was squash courts at the, the swimming centre that I was training at, and I was always quite good with a sort of a racket and a ball, and my dad took me on court one day, and um, I'd played every other racket sport and was fairly good at it, but just didn't really like it that much, and as soon as I stepped on a squash court, that was sort of it. I hit a couple of balls and was like, yep, yeah, I want to do this. Yeah, for me, uh, so my dad uh, played a lot from the age of about 12, and uh, I was very sporty as a young kid, running about, causing havoc. And, <laughs> and I think my dad was like, oh, come and try squash. So I uh, tried squash. Um, and the same as Elspeth, I absolutely loved it. Uh, just being able to hit the ball as hard as I could or not hard at all at the start. But it was just amazing. Um, being able to run around for hours was just so much fun. Yeah, I think it's really important because it allows the younger girls to see that there's sort of older girls that we maybe don't get as much contact as we'd like so it's it's a good event for them to see us people that have come through the system and are still in love with the sport. I think role models is a really big thing um, in sport and in anything. I think you always look at the people who are kind of at the top level in the world as role models um, but for younger kids I think being able to see that there's lots of people loving the game at a higher level is so important um, and even just us spending time with them and being on court um, I hope will make them want to train harder and work harder and try and see where they can get in the game. It's always fun being on court with um, people just having a good time, especially doubles, it's so much fun yeah. Um, and yeah just looking forward to seeing how they enjoy it and being on court with us. Like. Yeah, definitely. Definitely some stars of the future. I got into refereeing almost by accident. Uh, I, I started off 
coming into squash from tennis badminton, didn't know anything about it, so sort of read the rules, wanted to know a wee bit of the rules. I got into coaching and uh, particularly youngsters, beginners, so I wanted them to know obviously the rules as, as part of what they were doing. And then when I took my own daughters to squash competitions, I used to get awfully bored hanging around, waiting, one was on the court, one there was never enough time to sort of go away and come back. So I used to go to the reception and ask if there was any way I could help. And the organisation was always okay. They, they knew what they were doing, they had all the helpers. But they always seemed to be short of referees, so it would be a case of, well, would you mind going around being that much? Oh, could you referee that? And that's when I thought, right, I'd better go and get myself qualified and so that hopefully I'm doing it to the best of my ability. Um, and it just sort of followed on from, from, from there. You know, you then sort of get in, invited, are you free to go to this, are you free to do that? And I've just kept up the refereeing. Hand out, 6-8. Maureen Maitland then spoke about her appearance at next year's Commonwealth Games. I'm looking forward to it very, very much indeed. Uh, it will be my third Commonwealth Games, so I know what I'm letting myself in for. We'll be worked very hard, we'll be very stressed at times, getting assessed, and the players put us, can put us under a lot of pressure too, but uh, it's a great achievement. Uh, it's going to be the highlight of my career. Uh, it'll be the third, third time I'm going. 7-8. So. It's just wonderful to be able to give something back and I think and involved in other people. I mean, that's again, I, I got so much out of the game. I wanted to put something back and I think there's a lot of other people out there, particularly women, they've got an aptitude to sort of encourage youngsters, particularly girls. Sometimes girls can be a wee bit hesitant about going on and women, I think, can, you know, help them just take it at their own pace, at their own level. And you meet so many people and, and, and to see them coming on through, you get a great sense of achievement, see, seeing them progress uh, to whatever level. And there's no reason why we can't, we're desperate for more referees. So if we can get, and, and particularly women, and you know, you get places you maybe never been to before and, and great camaraderie, make new friends all over the world. I thoroughly recommend it. Hand out, nine seven. <laughs> It's every opportunity we get, we do try and sort of come on, will you do a bit, will you do a bit in the hope that, but it's difficult because you don't always have the time and the effort, but we're out to really, really try and get more and particularly with this initiative to, to get uh, more women uh, coming in and helping. Scottish Sport Athletics Club in Mary Hill in Glasgow have shown their commitment to equality and inclusion in the sport by driving participation in squash amongst BME communities and with women and girls. This has led to great work promoting squash and its health and fitness benefits with Notre Dame High School, where pupils attend fun introductory coaching sessions over six weeks, the fourth time pupils have taken part in 2017. Part of my job is to work with clubs in the west of Scotland um, with a, a focus on equality and inclusion. Uh, SSRC, this club here, are very, um, they've got a community ethos, they're very equal and inclusive of their community. Um, so when we looked at our development work, uh, they're very fortunate enough to have an uh, all-girls school just on the doorstep, which is obviously Notre Dame High School. One of the big things that we're trying to show here is that squash is for everyone. It is an absolutely inclusive sport. Um, clubs like this, are, their doors are open. So it, no matter what your background, your sexuality, your gender, whatever it is, squash, squash is for you and clubs like this, SSRC and Mary Hill, really prove that. What we're trying to show here through this project is that our clubs are open and inclusive. Um, all this partnership working and funding uh, has really allowed us to drive forward our women and girls participation in squash. As an end goal of that and where we see it going is that at some point this year, um, before the summer, we're going to run um, seven regional uh, social squash tournaments aimed at women and girls participation. SSRC are great because their coaches are really friendly and can help you at the same time. Yeah, like when I came, like I had no idea how to do it or what to do, but they really helped me out on what I'm doing. Yeah, the coaches, um, the very first time we came here, they showed us the different techniques, so now we, we can improve on them. And have you all enjoyed yourselves being here? Loved it. Yeah, it's so good. Amazing. Well, the school got involved because we built up excellent relationships with the local squash club um, and since then it's just gone from strength to strength and now um, we're regularly bringing the girls round, we, they walk round which is adding to their health and well-being, they come round and get coaching sessions from the staff here and uh, get to build on new skills and increase their fitness levels 
uh, the girls get so much enjoyment because it is a new activity. Well, after this, we've already spoken about how we can offer um, an extracurricular club uh, for the girls so that they can come after school and use the, the facilities here. started squash when I was nine years old. My mum took me down to the local leisure centre in Montrose and I just joined in with one of the group sessions one day. What do you eat before you play? What do I eat before I play? Well, I try not to eat too much, otherwise I'll be running around and it might not feel great. But normally before a match, I like to have sushi and a coffee and that normally sets me up ready for the, ready for the game. What's your biggest challenge over the years? My biggest challenge would over the years has probably been overcoming an illness that I got um, about two and a half years ago. I picked up a, a bug from Malaysia whilst competing and the mental challenges and physical challenges that, that presented me with to get back on court fighting fit was, was probably the toughest thing so far. Have you got any secrets you want to tell? Secrets? Yeah, I'll tell you. <laughs> Can't tell anybody that, can we? What's your biggest achievement? <laughs> My biggest achievement so far would definitely be representing Scotland at the Commonwealth Games. And that was nearly eight years ago now in Delhi, was the first time. And that was such a fantastic event to be part of because all the sports were there across Scotland competing for that one gold medal. So that's definitely been the highlight so far. How many times do you train a week? train six days a week um, and between two and three sessions a day it depends what those sessions look like so sometimes it'd be a court session with the coach or a practice match or some things in the gym but normally two sessions a day what's the biggest advice you'd give to someone who's just starting would be absolutely without a doubt you must smile and you must enjoy it otherwise what's the point what's the best advice you give the best advice I've ever been given is be patient. All good things come to those who wait. Thanks for that great report. I'm now pleased to welcome Scotland's number one women's player, Lisa Aitken, and Chief Executive for Scottish Squash, Maggie Still, to the studio. Thanks very much for joining us today, ladies. We're uh, really pleased to have you here. Um, firstly, Lisa, you've you came back from illness this year, you've returned from illness. Could you imagine this year going much better, following on from that? Uh, well, I could have won the lottery, that would have been brilliant. <laughs> but no, yeah, like you say, I had uh, probably about two and a half years off competing on the tour. I actually got ill whilst competing on the tour at a tournament in Malaysia. I contracted dengue fever from a lovely mosquito and um, yeah, that set me back quite a bit. So the return, um, yeah, try not to set a lot of pressure on myself and as a result, I've, I've done okay, I think. So, yeah, it's been good. Been good so far, anyway. And setbacks like that must spur you on all the more once you're fit again. You know, yeah. Make up for lost time, almost, in a sense, would you say? Yeah, I think you go through a lot. It was quite a long time, so there was, there was some loss of motivation at times or there was, yeah, like you said, being determined to get back on and do, do even, even better than I'd done before. Um, but it was quite quite the process. But once I was back fighting fit and back into competition, then yeah, I was really really eager to, um, you know, see what I've been missing and mm. build on that success before. Mm. And obviously, 2018 brand new years, almost like a clean slate as well. How excited are you for that now? It is. Yeah, we all make resolutions and uh, things like that at the beginning of the year. It's it's a big year for us with the Commonwealth Games. It's a pinnacle of our sport, um, squash. So. Yeah, it's it's a big year and also we're halfway through the season in terms of squash as well. So there's still half of the, the squash season to do. Um, but yeah, but I'm really looking forward to the Commonwealth Games. That's a big push for us next year. And so just going back to the start, what inspired you in the first place to take up squash? What inspired me was the success that other female athletes were having um, at the time that I first started, was introduced to sport. Um, I, did a, I did a lot of, of sports across the board from uh, football, tennis, badminton. Um, so, yeah, and luckily fell into squash. 
But yeah, I think it would just be at home, sitting watching the Olympics on, on the TV and seeing, for example, one that sticks in my mind is Kelly Holmes winning the double gold medal, 800, 1500 metres at the Olympics. That was the first time that I can remember thinking, I want some of that. That looks, <laughs> that looks really good. Um, and yeah, just, just went from there. Mm. And Maggie, um, Lisa's saying about how she would look up to Kelly Holmes and talking back to her own inspirations. How important is it for young girls to see people like Lisa in a sport like squash and getting the participation levels up and everything like that? Role models are really important. Mm -hmm. And for young children, young girls to be able to, to look up and see people succeeding and, and enjoying and loving what they do, it helps them to see that they could do likewise. So the more role models we could have like Lisa, um, and equally as coaches and as, a, as technical officials all the way through sport, to help girls to realise that, that sport is for them, and in this case squash is for them, will encourage them to come along. And they need to see people having fun whilst yeah. they're doing it, succeeding and enjoying themselves all along the way. And, you know, initiatives like ask girls to sport, how important is that? And from your point of view as the CEO of a governing body, how important is initiatives like this in getting the word out there and the message out there to girls? Hugely important. It gives us the marketing and the, the promotion that we can, uh, we can drive out to a specific audience. So it's actually targeted at girls, for girls, giving uh, images of girls having fun doing sport, succeeding at doing sport and achieving their lifetime ambitions. So to get a collective together and all sports working together and other agencies working together to promote those key messages and also to overcome obstacles that might get in girls' way and all collectively drive forwards to achieve, that for me is really important. So we're working mm -hmm. as, as a team together to, to get to where we want to be. And you know, girls do sport isn't just necessarily about girls playing sport themselves. You yourself, you're in a you're in a sports role. You're a woman in what's kind of maybe traditionally known as a man's world. How important are these headways that are being made for women in sport in terms of off pitch, <laughs> off the field? Yes, they're hugely important. Um, could probably have an entire show on some of my experiences coming through my career mm. in terms of doing a job that it might traditionally be seen as a as a male domain um, and we'd have some fun doing <laughs> doing that film as well but actually there are a lot more women achieving mm -hmm. and realizing that they can achieve their ambitions whether it is actually in performance having fun playing sport or in a role a, a job within sport um, just knowing you can do it and breaking through that glass ceiling that you mm. might might uh, have heard of is, is really important. And all I would say is, if you think you can, go for it and have a go, because when you do break through, it's hugely rewarding to achieve what you've wanted to achieve mm. all your life. And uh, it's kind of almost a self actualization when you get mm. there and you think, can do it, keep going. And mm. then there's more girls making more difference, more girls and women making more difference for girls and women within sport. Mm, that's brilliant. And Lisa, just going back to you know the sport itself now, how exciting a time is it for Scottish and British squash for all the young girls that are coming through now, you know, that fresh crop of that fresh, yeah, crop, that fresh no, crop of players? Certainly for Scottish squash, it's really exciting time at the minute. Like I said earlier, I had probably about two and a half years off. Mm. Since returning, um, we've competed at the European Team Championships, which is actually a very prestigious event um, in terms of the team and for Scotland and we actually missed out on that for a few years since returning with this fresh crop like you said we got automatic promotion the first time we were back in and and then the second year we got a bronze medal so there's there's really great players coming through at the minute um, George Adderley in particular she's 16 year old girl who's multi-talented given up football um, for Scotland to pursue her squash dream and mm -hmm. there's um, there's there's plenty of others coming through as well. It's very exciting for me, in my point of view. It's the most exciting that it's been since I started playing squash at nine. Yeah. Um, so there's lots of potential there, and it's a, definitely a watch this space moment in terms of um, Scotland and female sport, mm. female squash. Sorry. Yeah. Well, as you say, it's a watch this space moment for Scottish female squash. How major would it be to have a major? How big would it be to have a major competition come here to Scotland and compete in a home event like that? Yeah, I mean, home events are, they really set the bar in terms of 
motivation and, and being determined to do well. Um, as it stands, we have an event um, called the Edinburgh Open, which is a registered professional event for women to play in. And they have doubled their prize money for next year's event, particularly for the women to play in. So that's actually an event that I'm hopefully going to be targeting as, as a win next year. And to be able to do that in Edinburgh in front of the home crowd is, is going to be awesome. So the, the sport and certainly from the female side is her, heading in the right direction. Well, a big thanks to Lisa and Maggie for coming on Girls to the Sport. And now it's over to our audience for some of their questions. Our first question comes from Susanna. Hey, um, so my question is, uh, who was your sporting idol while you were growing up? Whilst I was growing up, it was Kelly Holmes, um, for sure, watching her at the Olympics, getting the double gold in the 800 and the 1500. Um, as I've said before, it was that first sporting moment for me sitting at home thinking that's something that I would like to do and, and achieve the success that she has as well. Um, current role models within my sport, I would say, are Laura Mazzaro. She's number two in the world and she has been able to reach world number one and be world champion through quite a dominant period where a female called Nicole David was world number one for nine years. She was able to knock her off and uh, reach the top through her own skill, fitness, and in particular, her mental capabilities are something that I look up to. That's brilliant. Thanks very much, Susanna. Our next question is coming from Chris. Hi. So what visions do you have for uh, women's squash in the future? We are looking to, to grow it across the board. So we want more women and girls playing squash and we're putting a lot of energy into our projects that are, are driving this. So we particularly like to, to drive a program, Girls Do Squash, and really get more people recognising that it's a fun game, it's a great game to get involved in sociably, and, and let's do that. And as they come in, they'll realise that there's great progress that can be made quickly and you know who knows if they really get stuck in and put that en energy into there they might end up like a, another Lisa <laughs> further down the line but yes we're looking to to grow the numbers playing and we also are really keen to to drive our European teams to make sure that our highest performers are able to complete across Europe and across the world so we're putting structures in place to help them to be as good as they can be at the highest levels of squash. Thanks very much Chris and our final question today is coming from Damaris. Hi, my question is what have been your highlights since you started to play, to play squash? The highlight would probably be competing on the world stage at the Commonwealth Games. Um, the Commonwealth Games for squash is the pinnacle of the sport so being selected for that team being amongst all the other top athletes and all the other sports, everybody coming together like a like a family um, and striving for the best in that moment was, yeah, definitely the highlight so far. Thanks to our studio audience and remember you can join in the conversation by using the hashtag on Twitter, Girls Do Sport. It's now time for a bit of fun with our guests because I know you're really excited for this. <laughs> Home of our nine shows, you can try and find out who can fit the most words into their sport in just 15 seconds. So, Lisa, we're going to have you looking down that camera there. Right. And as quickly as possible, if you can let everyone listening, everyone watching at home, know just why you should get yourself involved with squash. Get up. Go. Squash is fun because it's fast-paced, dynamic. It's a great adrenaline pumping, stress buster. Um, everyone can get involved, family, friends. It's competitive. There's a great community. Go on then, finish your last. Okay, it's a really good one. We won't do it in the game. It was once voted, or is voted, the world's healthiest sport. Need I say more? I knew that was going to be a good one when <laughs> you said that there. Well, you had got 29 there. Very well done. Great effort. We'll get that added on to our leaderboard, which you can see for all our episodes so far on the Facebook page, Scottish Women in Sport. That's all we have time for today, but just before we go, we'll let you know what's happening across the world of sport in Scotland in the next few weeks. For more information about these events and others, head over to sportonspec.co.uk. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Girls Do Sport, brought to you by Scottish Women in Sport, as well as the students of Studio Lab and sports journalists of the University of the West of Scotland. We'd like to thank our brilliant partners, Brand Oath, for making everything look fabulous and Sport on Spec. Keep the conversation going using the hashtag Girls Do Sport, but for now, thanks for watching. <laughs>